Hello gents, guys welcome again to BMG Tutorials. Today we are going to continue our accounting journey and uh, I do believe that you are doing well. Myself also I'm doing very well. Without wasting my time, we we'll go straight to the point. Today we are looking at partnership account part 2. We have already had a look at the part 1 of which we went through all the theory parts by knowing the format of partnership, how we go by final accounts of a partnership business. Right, so we are going to take a question today. Then we see how to treat some terms and some agreements made by the partners before they set up a business and when they are running up the business, what they need to do at the end of accounting period by preparing their final accounts. So we are going to look at a question and um, I don't want to write the question on the board i'm just going to dictate or read through the question so please pay attention as i read through the question then we go to the solution part of it on the board right so i take a question t and leaf are trading in a partnership their trial balance at 31st march 2004 is as follows so we have two partners we have t and leaf we have T and Leaf in partner or in partnership trading, but we have their um, trial balance as follows. So we have their capital account to be, we have their capital account to be. Uh, 1st April 2003, so from the beginning of the period, their capital balance was, T had a capital balance of 100,000, and um, Leaf has a capital balance of 50,000, so we have 100,000 and 50,000 respectively for the two partners. Then also we have their current account balance at 1st April 2003, T had a 5,000 current account balance then leave also had 10,000 balance then also we had drawings made by the partners we had T for 29,000 and um, leave had also 31,000 as drawings then also we have sales to be 215,000 then we have purchases to be 84,000 we have stock at 1st April 2003 to be 16,000 then we have selling expenses to be 30,000 administration expenses 42,000 we have fixtures and fittings at cost 48,000 then we have provision for depreciation on fixtures and fittings to be 8,000 we have office equipment at cost 27,000 we have provision for depreciation of office equipment 5,000 we have trade debtors to be 24,000, trade creditors to be 11,000, bank balance to be 85,000, and then loan from leave, that is one of the partners, 12,000 as loan to the partnership business or to the organization. Then we have a total to be 416,000 each, with the both side, which made a trial balance balanced, right? Then we have additional information. I do believe that you know where to place these balances on the trial balance. Right. Then we have additional information. We have one stock at 31st March 2004, 20,000. So we have that is our closing stock or closing inventory in the additional information to be 31st March 2004, $20,000. Then we have selling expenses prepaid at 31st March 2004 to be 6,000. Then we have administration expenses accrued at 31st March 2004 to be also $4,000. Then four, we have depreciation is to be provided as follows. On fixtures and fittings, 10% at cost. So we are to depreciate fixtures and fittings 10% at cost per annum. Then also we have office equipment to be depreciated 20% at cost also. Then, point five, we have leave made the loan to the business on 1st April 
2003. So please take note, the loan was given out on 1st April 2003. That is the beginning of the accounting period. So that, that is the date. Then the partners had not made any agreement regarding interest, salaries or profit sharing. So that is that. We have the partners had no agreement regarding interest, um, interests regarding yeah interest salaries or profit sharing. So there was no any agreement between the partners regarding these things. And I told you or we had a look at the um, part one of the partnership accounts or the partnership business account that if there is no any agreement between the partners we have act 1890 that governs the, the the business and states the rules and what uh, regulate and like states the rules and what to, what needs to be done for the partners if there is no agreement between them so that is what we are going to apply right we are going straight to the question then or we have um, read through the question so we are going straight to the solution then we start by preparing so you are required to prepare the partnership trading profit and loss and appropriation account for the year ended 31st march 2004 then b you are required to prepare partners current account at 31st march 2004 in, in a columnar form then also C, you are, pre you are to prepare the partnership balance sheet or statement of financial position at 31st March 2004. Right, so we are going to take the first one, which is we are going to prepare A. That is, um, we, have, we are preparing from the books of what? T and Leaf. So we are preparing from the books of what? T and Leaf Partnership. So, Partnership. We are preparing from the books of what? T and Leaf Partnership Business. Right, so we are to prepare um, trading profits and loss and appropriation accounts for the year for the year ended 31st March 2004 so we are to prepare the A A say we are to prepare the trading profits and loss and appropriation accounts for the year ended 31st March 2004 and please mind you, the accounting period of these partners starts from 1st April and it started from 1st April 2003, so which is the accounting period or the year is supposed to end at what? 31st March 2004, so we are preparing this for a year or 12 months, right? Then we are going to start with what? Our income statement or our trading we do, then we continue with our profit and loss and appropriation account. And as we know from the preparation of all the trading or the income statement, we start with ourselves and place, mind you, we are dealing in what? Dollars. So we put our currency sign, right? Then we start with our sales. When we go to the question, we have our sales to be 215,000. So we have sales to be 215,000. So 215,000 as 215,000. Then we are going to list our cost of sales. Our cost of sales, we're gonna consider our opening inventory or the opening stock. 
So we have our opening stock, opening stock, or inventory. Right. So our opening stock from the question, we have it to be 16,000. So we have one, six, thousand. Then we add our purchases. Right, so from the question, we have our purchases to be 84,000. So we have 84,000 as our purchases. Then if there is any uh, returns outwards or purchases returns, we're going to take it from there. Then if there is any um, carriage inwards, we are going to add it to the purchases figure. But there is nothing like that, so we're just going to sum up the purchases and the uh, opening stock or open inventory. Then we have our cost of goods available for sales. As we know, when you sum up your net purchases and your opening inventory, you have your cost of goods available for sales, of which we call it COGAS. So the 16,000 and this will give us $100,000. Right, so when you have this, your COGAS, let me say we have this as what, our COGAS. This COGAS or cost of goods available for sales, we're gonna less our closing inventory or stock so we are going to list our closing inventory or closing stock from the cogas and from the question we have our closing inventory to be 20,000 so we have 20,000 to be our closing stock and when we deduct this we're going to have our cost of sales so we take from that then we have our cost of sales to be what 80,000 so when we deduct 80,000 from 215,000, that is going to give us 135,000. So this 135,000 that we have becomes our gross profit. And you can see that for the trading session in the part one of this topic, I didn't um explain the trading section or the income statement of the partnership business because it's almost same as what the uh, income statement for the sole trader business so you can see that everything that we do for sole trader business is same way that we are doing there's nothing that is changing here so that is why i didn't explain for the uh, i didn't explain in the income statement of this partnership because nothing is changing right then we have our gross profit if you get your gross profit you know from there you are going to what deduct all your expenses or your overheads from the gross profit to arrive at your net profit so let's see if we have some other expenses to be deducted we have selling expenses so we have selling expenses right then when you get to the um, the profit and loss section, please be reminded that you have to be checking the additional information or the further information that was given to you because some of the expenses you are going by what the accrual and what matching concept. There are some expenses that we have always that need to be added. Then any other expenses that have been paid advance that needs to be also deducted. So we are going to look at that. So we have selling expenses from the question we have it to be what 30,000. So we have selling expenses to be 30,000. Then I think in the additional information that was prepaid, so we have less prepaid expense. On this particular selling expense, there was prepaid of what I think um, 6,000. So we have 6,000 as prepaid and we are going to less that. So when we deduct that, we're gonna have 24,000 as our um, actual selling expense for the period, right? Then also we're going to have administration expenses. So we have administration 
administration expenses and that's also from the question we have administration to be 42,000 so we have 42,000 then there was accrual or arrears from the question we have um, administration expenses accrued at the first mile 2004 to be 4,000 so we have add owings or accruals or um, arrears right so that is also 4,000 so we have 4,000 so when we add that we're gonna have 46,000 also for administration expenses for the period then if there is any other expense we have depreciation so remember that we are to um, charge depreciation on the non-current asset or the fixed asset that we have in your question we have fixtures and fittings we have um, office equipment and fixtures and fittings are to be what depreciated by 10 percent per annum then also 20 percent is to be charged on what um, office equipment as depreciation so we have depreciation depreciation we have fixtures right we have fixtures and fittings we have fixtures and fittings so we're going to take the cost of the assets because it's, it, uh, the question is telling us to calculate or depreciate on the cost of the asset not the net book value brought down so the cost of the asset in the question we have it to be 48,000 so we have 10% which is 0 0.1 multiplying 48,000 that is going to give us 4,800 as our depreciation charge on fixtures and fittings then also we're going to have um, office equipment office equipment which also is to be depreciated by what 20 potentials that, that is 0 0.2 multiplying the cost of the asset is 27,000 27,000 and that is going to give us 27 by this will give us four uh, five thousand four hundred so that is five thousand four hundred that is depreciation then also remember that salaries I told you in the part one that salaries are not to be what, treated in the profit and loss account Please take note, in preparing the uh, profit and loss account for a sole trader, we treat wages and salaries in the profit and loss account by debiting the profit and loss account as what an expense. But for um, partnership business, we don't treat salary as an expense, we, we put it in the uh, preparation account or in the current account as well. Right. And the preparation account, appropriation account, we treat it there by what? Deducting from our net profit that we have before we share the profit that will be left to the partners right so remember not to put or treat salaries in the profit and loss account then also there was a loan given by one of the partners with, uh, which is leave so the interest that we need to pay becomes an expense to the organization so we have interest on loan so we have interest on loan to be what and the loan amount was 12,000 and the interest rate was what uh, right so remember there is a loan given by a partner and the question here is 
there is no agreement between the partners and remember i told you in the part one that if there is no agreement the act 1890 says that partners loan giving to or a partner giving a loan to the organization should earn or should be paid five percent on the loan per annum so we assume that there is no any agreement here between the partners but the act 1890 is telling us to give or pay 5% on this loan to the partner who gave out the loan to the organization. So we are going to charge 5%, which is 0 0.05, multiplied by what, 12,000, and that is going to give us, that is going to give us um, 600. So we go through the question, if there is any other expenses to be um, charged there, no, so that is all the expenses that we have here. So we're going to sum up all that, and when we sum up all that, we're going to give us a total of what? 80,800. So we have 80,800. Deducting from 135,000, we are going to have 54,200. So we have 54. 200 as our net profit. This becomes our net profit, 54,200. Now, this 54,200 that we have as our net profit, if there is any salary to be paid to a, a, an active partner, we are going to deduct from that. If there is any interest on capital to be paid to the partners, we are going to deduct from that. If there is any interest on drawings, to receive as what income to the organization is going to be added to this net profit that we have here before we, are, we share the remaining profit to the partners according to their agreed sharing uh, ratio. If there is no any agreement on that sharing, uh, profit sharing ratio, then the Act 1890 says that we should what, share the profit equally to the partners. But according to this question, there is no agreement and there is no salary to be paid. If there is no agreement between the partners, no salary is to be paid to any of the partners. So we have this as our net profit. And we are going to share this net profit to the partners based on their agreed profit sharing ratio. And here is the case that we don't have any agreement between them. So meaning we are going to share this equally to the partners. So I'll continue from here. We have the appropriation account. We continue from here. Let's, we have the net profits to be 54,200. Sorry. So 54,200. And we have it in dollars. So remember, we have it in dollars. So we have the net profit to go at 54,200. 54, and remember I told you that the appropriation account is the continuation of what the profit and loss account. So here we are going to share them. So we have um, share of profits or profit sharing. So we have T and because there is no agreement or anything like profit sharing ratio we are going to share the profit equally so we have one over two one over two which is half of this 54 200 so this we have this to balance 54 200 and uh, leave also same half of the profit that we have at hand 200 so we're going to have this to be 27,100, 27,100 to each of the partners, 27,100 to each of the partners. So we have it to be total of what, 54,200 as well. So that balance the profit and loss and appropriation accounts. We have them having what? 
uh, 27,100 to each of the partners as their profit. So 20, 27,100 as what their profit share. Now, that brings us to the end of what? The trading profit and loss and appropriation account for the year ended 31st March 2004 for the partners. Then we look at the B, which says we are to prepare partners' current account at 31st March 2000 and 2004 in a columnar form. So we are going to prepare the partners' current account. I'm going to clean this part. Then we prepare our partners current account here and I hope you've gotten everything that we, we just did and you may not have any problem and um, if you have any problem I'll play to you that you put in the comment section so that I will reply to you as soon as possible and just do keep practicing more of more examples and you'll find it easy to solve any um, partnership question right so we are going to prepare the t and uh, t and leaf partnership Partnership current account as at thirty first March two thousand and four. Right. So we are preparing this in a columnar form, we are not preparing it separately for the partners. So we're gonna have T then leaf and we are dealing in dollars so remember to put your currency we have leaf put your currency then t also we have the currency now before we proceed with the current account preparation i just want to remember you i told you that when the, the partners agree to go or to maintain a fixed capital account in their books, that is when we come in. We come in with what a current account. The current account is coming in as what as uh, the, to do any adjustment that needs to be done in the capital account if we are to maintain fluctuating fixed capital, fluctuating capital. Sorry. If you are to maintain fluctuating capital, any adjustment, if there is any salary to a partner, that will be added to the capital account by crediting the capital account. If there is any uh, uh, interest on capital to be paid toward a partner, that will be done in the capital account. If there is any drawing to be deducted, if there is any interest on drawing to be deducted, all those are going to be what done in the capital account if we are, they are maintaining a fluctuating capital. But here is the case that we are giving a uh, current account balance, meaning that they are maintaining a fixed capital. Nothing should be done to uh, fluctuate or to change the figure of the capital account balance. That is why we are giving the current account. So anything that needs to be what, added to their capital will be done in the current account then it will maintain or it will make their capital balance fixed that is simple so we go on then we look at the question we have the current account balance for each of them we have balance brought down so we have balance brought down we have for t to be five thousand five thousand then we have for leave to also 10,000. 